oneself. And knowing who you are, I mean, that's the foundation of, of everything great. People should learn from my mistakes as well, not only my successes. That's the beauty of living a life. I'm not a perfect guy. You can take whatever out of it that you choose that applies to you. Some things that I've done will not apply to you. And I mean, by the grace of God and whatever angels that I had over my shoulders, I made it through. You may not make it through that same hole. But if you can take what I've done and then perfect on it, then that's great. We all aspire. We all have the same emotions. You know, no matter who you are, where you're from, we all have the same emotions. You know, we all want to be successful. We all have the same fears of failure. We all have this feelings of abandonment. We all want love. We have to stretch the uh, audience. You know, it can't be a young man's game. It has to be a genre of music, you know. And what I do while recording is I find the truth. Whatever truth that I'm going through, it's, it's a real emotion. If I say, I got to learn to live with regrets. Now, I can relate that to that in my life. You can relate to that in your life. Everyone can relate to it. So I find a, a true emotion and connect to that emotion rather than try to make a certain type of record to make a, a kitty record. You got to understand the reason, right? Why does that guy think like that? Right? How do, how do you arrive at that point? You got to also look at that. You have to look at that. You got to look at the environments and places we live in and how things are set up and how things are structured and how we're always the last on the totem pole, even from our school and to our roads, you know, everything that, we, that all the obstacles that's placed in front of us. If this is what I have to live for, then I'm going to take a chance to get more. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me. My first album, but I, I never really took it serious. It was more of a hobby. And it was, su it was such a gift to me. Like, it was a gift. Like, it wasn't really hard for me to make to create rap it wasn't hard for me to write rhymes and things like that this is when i used to write like in my earlier days i used to write every day every single day in the kitchen banging on the table my mom's like please get us a break back here i had this clean notebook i used to just write every single day i wasn't writing with the intention of having a record deal or anything like that it was just something that i like to do it was more of a hobby I wasn't really just trying to get a record deal. So I would, I would run the streets after that, then I just stopped writing. So then I would still get all these ideas. I have all these ideas, and I still make songs, but I now I'm making these songs in my head. But So it still wasn't a serious thing to me. But to my man Chaz, who was also from Marcy, he got a record deal with EMI, and they gave him some paper. It was like 300000 like back then. This is like 88 or something. I'm like, for real? So it took a while, but when I really started getting serious, my first album came out in 96, and it was like, and I had to put the album out myself, nobody would sign me, they thought I was terrible. Every single record, I went to every single record label, they was like, this guy's terrible, he's nothing. I mean, like, it went from singles, like, I would press up singles, but in the car, I had to go to the record company, I mean, go to the record store myself, and here, yeah, take this, come back, get $100, $200, give them some more records. I mean, it was really, it really started like that. Like, I mean, but it made me appreciate it so much more. No one gave me anything. They didn't give me a record deal. They didn't, they didn't give me anything. Like, I really just took my time and grew it step by step by step by step. And that goes from not listening to other people again. Because I could have easily been like, wow, maybe I'm right. And maybe what I'm talking about ain't right. You know what I'm saying? They say it. Everyone, no one wants to sign me. Maybe, maybe what I'm saying ain't right. I could have easily took that. That was easy. That would, that would have stopped the suffering. <laughs> but I didn't. I want everything to be in a real simple and honest place. You know, like even the videos. You know, I, I don't want videos, like music videos. Like each one is like a doc, or this is a short, or this is a even the cartoon uh, that we uh, made for OJ. Like I wanted it to be just an honest portrayal of everything that I was saying. Like the, the story of OJ is about us moving forward. And for us to move forward, we had to take a look back. And we took a look back and say, okay, this is where we came from. And like, this is real images. These were shot by Warner Brothers and all these, uh, not to single them out, bro. These were shot by major studios. Like, these cartoons were on TV. This imagery of how we were presented was this. And I wanted to draw a thread between that's really happening now. It's still happening. 
It's just not as overt. When you look at TV, you don't see a fair, equal representation of people of color. You know, when there's a show on TV, it's like there's black shows on TV, or like, that's a big deal. That should that should be an everyday occurrence because we are all like dynamic humans and creatures, and it's we haven't evolved past race still. And so it's like still, nigga, like that's, you know, those points are like real important to me. You know, I think that, uh, of course, the, the headlines will be about being Kanye and things like that, but like this album has a lot of topics, you know, that's why it had to be so short. It's so condensed. It's so dense with subject matters and all these other things that if it was longer, like, you wouldn't be able to take it. It would like wear you out. Never forget those true things that you stick to, the basic things that make you successful. And for me, it's that truth, finding that truth, the truth for the moment of where I am at the time. You know, not trying to cater to a certain demographic. I was around music my whole life. My mom and pop had like a huge record collection. So I started out listening to music early on and I would just write music. You know, I just had a love from there. I didn't get to it, you know. I got caught into my neighborhood and my surroundings, but I've always taken it with me. I've always went back to it. And it just got to a point where it was like, make this decision. This is something you really love and you love to do. It's time to really focus on it and to get serious about it and give it your all. And once I did that, it was no looking back from there. Uh, my advice is to do things that are true to you. Most things that I'm involved with are extension of being creative. You know, Rockaway is a clothing company. It's part of who you are, and hip-hop is your attitude and what you're trying to express, how you dress. You know, I love sports growing up. I grew up in a household where the sports was on 24-7. So these are all things that are, are comfortable for me. You know, these are things that I like. So I would just say get involved in things that you love and also have a standard for yourself and have some sort of integrity and try to, you know, find some sort of truth in what you're doing. All the things that you apply in business, you know, they say that he has great instincts. Well, well on the streets, having great instincts can be the difference between life and death, not just losing a deal or incarceration, you know, which is less than death. And being a person of high integrity, you know, people want to deal with you in business and trust and honorable, a man of your word. All these things come to play in the business world. I'm not condoning uh, anything, any street uh, activity. It's just the way it is. It's not about who got more money and who got more house. You know, you've earned it by what you want. But don't forget what's important. Without people, and just being rich would be very boring. No one to share with, <laughs> no one to have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you yeah. just be a rich yeah. person, one person on the planet. Just yeah. like, well, then what do you do? Things don't happen to you, they happen for you. That's life. Everything is life. It happens for you. Everything is for your greatest good. You can't control the future. I mean, you can control it up to some point. You can't control what others do. You can't control anything. Someone can run a red light, and that's the end of everything. You know, you only can control what you can control. Seeing things from other people's perspective and what other people are going through, you know, helps me a lot. Was that somebody else that helped you get to that? Is that therapy? Is that group? Is that part of therapy? But part of being who I am, you know. But definitely a lot of a lot of therapy. I've been taught everything but emotional intelligence. You know, that's not what you're taught as a young man growing up in projects. You're Absolutely. taught to survive. I come from the school of making albums. I know right now, you know, everything being digital and everything being so fast and everything that, you know, separate from people, you know. I try to make albums because, for me, it's a capsule of time. You know, it's not just music for me. You know, I, you know for me, it's where I was at this moment or what I'm trying to capture what I'm trying to capture the blueprint is you know what I call a new classic because it's influenced by the Marvin Gaze and the generation before us but it's not a recreation of what they've done my interpretation of it and it's me making my mark it's saying here this is what I want to be remembered as right here I think every move made like we're going to compare it to chess I think every move made is to be learned from whether it was a good or a bad move. And I think it all sets you on a path. So in order for me to take back any of those moves, I would have to be unhappy with where I am now. And where I am now is, I couldn't even imagine in my wildest dreams. 
that I would be here. So for me to take any of those moves back would be affecting the natural course of where I am now. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I mean, of course, there are things in life that you say I could have done differently. But knowing that and being aware of that, for me, it's helped me. You know, every chess move that I made, I was like, ah, oh, he's going to do that. It's like it was followed up because I learned from that one. Okay, now I have to change my strategy because, you know, I moved that there. He's going to move there. Now I have to move this over there. So at the end of the game, I, you know, I believe I trapped the queen in the corner to use a great analogy and I have the king in my side. So I'm pretty happy with who I am. That